In this video we have a compound channel where Manning's N is 0.016 and the longitudinal slope of the channel is 0.001 and we're being asked to calculate the mean velocity and the discharge of the channel. So the channel geometry is given here. You can think of an example of compound channel flow as a river under flood conditions. So under normal conditions if the flow is within the river's banks then the cross-sectional area could be approximated by a rectangle but once the flow has gone over the banks of the river we now have a compound channel where the geometry is more complicated because we have to take into account the flood plains as well as the main channel. So this is an example of a compound channel and we're going to try to work out the mean velocity and the discharge for the roughness and the slope. So our starting point is going to be Manning's equation so we know that the velocity of fluid in a channel using Manning's equation is the hydraulic radius the 2 over 3 times by the square root of the longitudinal slope divided by the roughness. So in the question we're given the longitudinal slope and we're given the roughness value. So to work out the velocity all we need to do is work out the hydraulic radius and plug that back into this equation. So we know that the hydraulic radius is going to be the area of the channel divided by the wetted perimeter of the channel. So what we need to do to work out the velocity in this channel is first work out the area, then work out the wetted perimeter, then divide the two numbers and plug them back into Manning's equation. So first of all, what is the area of this channel going to be? And the way that I'm going to do that is by calculating the area of the two limbs, so these two rectangles, and then adding it to the area of the main channel. So we can see that if we treat this, this floodplain or this, this limb of the channel as a rectangle, if the total depth here is 1.4 and the depth from the base to the bottom of that section is 1.2, then we can see that this depth here must be 0.2 meters. So the area of this rectangle here would be its width times its height, so it's 3 meters wide times its height of 0.2 meters and that's going to give us the area of this rectangle here. The main channel is 1.4 meters deep and 1.5 meters wide, so the main channel's area is going to be 1.4 times 1.5 and then our final rectangle is again going to be 0.2 times 0.3 so 0.2 times, times 3 meters and that gives us an area for the cross section of 3.3 meters squared. The wetted perimeter which is the length of material on the side of the channel touching water, so it's going to be this length across the whole channel. So all we need to do is just add up the total length of material touching water, so we've got 0.2 here, we've got 3 metres of side material touching water here, we've got 1.2 meters touching water here, we've got 1.5 meters touching water here, another 1.2 here, another 3 here, and then another 0.2 here. So all we've done is calculate the total length of material on the side of the channel that's touching water. So we've just added up all of the various lengths to give us this total length of material touching water and that gives us a wetted perimeter of 10.3 meters. So now we've got our area, we've got our wetted perimeter, we can work out our hydraulic radius as our cross-sectional area divided by our wetted perimeter which gives us a hydraulic radius of 0.32 meters. So now we have everything we need to plug into our velocity equation, to plug into Manning's equation to get that velocity, so hydraulic radius is 0.32, we've just calculated that to the power of 2 over 3 
square root of the slope. We're given the slope in the question as 0.01. We're given our Manning's n in the question as 0.016. So that gives us a velocity for this channel of 0.93 meters per second. And once we've got that velocity, we can then use continuity to work out the flow. So we know that Q is going to be equal to velocity times cross-sectional area. We've just worked out the velocity. We've also worked out the area, total cross-sectional area, so we can get a discharge in this channel of three meters cubed per second. So this is one way to do this calculation. The limitation with this method is what we've done is assumed that the velocity is uniform across the whole cross section. So we've just treated this whole cross section as though it has a uniform velocity. In reality, that's not going to be the case because the resistance in these limbs of the channel is going to be much higher than the resistance in the main channel. So our velocity is actually going to be a lot higher in the main channel than it is in the limbs of this channel. It could also be the case that our roughness may be different in the limits of the channel than it is in the main channel. In this example, they're the same, but it could be the case that that roughness is different. So we can actually come to a more accurate calculation of velocity and discharge by breaking this channel up into, into three sub-channels. So instead of treating the whole channel as one and doing the calculation inside Manning's equation, we can break it into three separate channels and do the calculation that way. So. Let's have a go at doing that. So what we're now going to do is the same equation again, same process again, but we're actually going to now break this up into three sub-channels. So we're going to call this limb channel one, the main channel channel two, and this limb channel three. So we're going to consider Manning's equation for this channel here, this channel here, and then finally for the main channel. And that should give us a slightly more ca accurate calculation because we're now taking into account the fact that we're going to have a lower velocity in our limbs because we're going to have higher resistance than in the main channel. So if we remember that Manning's equation is r to the 2 over 3 times square root of s over n, and we're now going to apply that equation to each of these sub-channels. So again, for all of the channels, we've got the longitudinal slope and we've got Manning's roughness. So the only thing we need to work out for each of the channels is the hydraulic radius. Our hydraulic radius is still going to be the area of the sub-channel divided by the wetted perimeter. So we need to think for each of those sub-channels, what is the area and what is the distance of material touching water. So let's start by doing that calculation for channel number one. So like we said in the last bit of the example, this distance here is going to be 0.2 meters because the total height is 1.4. The height from the base to the base of the limb is 1.2. So this distance here is going to be 0.2. So the area of channel number one. The area of this sub-channel is going to be 0.2 times 0.3, which gives us an area for that sub-channel of 0.6 meters squared. The wetted perimeter is going to be 0.2 add, add 3 meters. We're not going to add this 0.2 here because there's no material there touching water. So the only length we need is this 0.2 add this 3 meters which gives us a length of 3.2 meters. So now we can work out the hydraulic radius for that sub-channel of 0.6 which is our cross-sectional area divided by 3.2 which gives us a hydraulic radius of 0.1875 meters and we can then just plug that into our Manning's equation so our hydraulic radius is 0 0.1875 to the power of 2 over 3 times the square root of the slope divided by Manning's n which gives us a velocity of 
0.647 meters per second. And then if we want the flow for that subchannel, that's going to be our velocity that we've just calculated times by the area of the channel, which is 0.6, which gives us a flow of 0.388 meters cubed per second. So what we've just done there is calculate the velocity and the flow in, in the subchannel number one. That's going to be exactly the same as subchannel number two because the width and the depth and Manning's n are the same for the one and three. So the calculation we've just done for one is exactly the same as the calculation that we would do for three. So our final flow rate here is going to be the flow rate for both channel one and channel three. So all we now need to do is final calculation to work out the velocity and flow rate for channel number two. So again, we're going to use Manning's equation. The only unknown is our hydraulic radius, so we need to work out the area and the wetted perimeter. So the area of our channel is going to be the height times the width, so 1.4 times 1.5, which gives us an area of that channel of 2.1 meters squared. Wetted perimeter is going to be the length of sides touching the water, so we're going to have 1.2 here plus 1.5 at the base, plus 1.2 here. So we don't use the entire depth because not all of the depth is touching water. So we've only got this 1.2 touching water here, then all of the base, then this 1.2 meters of, of side touching water there. So it's gonna be 1.2, add 1.5, add 1.2, which gives us a wetted perimeter of 3.9 meters. So our hydraulic radius is going to be area over wetted perimeter, which gives us a hydraulic radius of 0.539 meters. We can then plug that back into Manning's equation. So the hydraulic radius to the power of 2 over 3 times square root of the slope divided by Manning's n, which gives us a velocity in the channel of 1.3 meters per second. And then to work out the flow, we just need to times that velocity by the cross-sectional area. So the velocity is 1.3 meters per second. The cross-sectional area we've already calculated is 2.1 meters squared, which gives us a final flow for the main channel of 2. 747 meters cubed per second. So what we've now done is work out the velocity and the flow for each of the three subchannels. So if we wanted to work out the total flow in the channel as a whole, what we need to do is add up the flows for the three subchannels. So our total flow would be the flow in channel one, which is 0 0.388 meters cubed per second, plus the flow in channel two, which is 2.747 meters cubed per second, plus the flow in channel three, which is also 0 0.388 meters cubed per second, which gives us a final total flow in the channel of 3.523 meters cubed per second. So this is how we would calculate the flow in a compound channel using uh, what we would call the vertical strip method where we broke the channel into individual subchannels, applied Manning's equation to each of the subchannels and then summed up the answer to get a final flow uh, for the channel 0.5.